All right, so we're gonna do cuspid prep. Cuspid prep is very similar to the incisor prep with a couple few exceptions that I'll point out. So once again, we're gonna go millimeter and a half incisal reduction. Use this burr as your friend, it's your depth guide. So I drop this down so that the tip of the tooth lines up with the top of the burr and then you just make a notch. So I make a little mark right there. And then once I make that mark, then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take off the tip until that mark disappears. So I'm gonna basically just take away that mark. There we go, and that's the incisal reduction. Step number two, just like incisor preparation, you're gonna do your gross reduction axial depth cut step, racetrack axial depth cut step. And when I do these, when I do my racetrack, it's almost like if you're tracing. If you've, if you've ever done any drawing before, a lot of times you'll make a faint little line right where you want it, which in this case is right along the gum line. And then once you have it right where you want it, then you're gonna go back in and thicken the line or create your racetrack at that point. So I basically am staying in that little groove that I've recreated and I'm making nice big sweeping movements to basically groove that racetrack. And we start to go interproximally. Um, you notice we have a little bit of space there, which is nice. It makes it a little easier. And then on the distal, as I go through interproximally, I'm watching the side of the burr miss or barely pass by the tooth I'm not prepping. So I'm actually not even looking at the tooth I'm prepping. I'm looking at the tooth that I'm missing. And that's a uh, way to get interproximal without banging up your adjacent tooth too bad. All right, so let's check that out. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I have my little blower elves helping me blow the dust off these Typodont teeth. The joys of prepping Typodont teeth. Brings back wonderful memories from dental school. So I'm gonna do the lingual. Once again, you wanna create a line right at the tissue level. And then you're gonna go back in and thicken that line. And develop your racetrack as we go around there. So, a little bit of air for us. Let me just double check. It looks like, so let me show you something here. This is important. A key visual cue when you're doing zirconia crown preparation is you want to make sure, let me show this better. You want to make sure that you can quickly identify the racetrack. You should be able to see it in a millisecond. If you have to like think about it or it's like, okay, it's maybe there or not there, I can't really decide, it's not enough. Go back and do more so that when you look at your racetrack, you can see it all the way around the tooth immediately within a, within a millisecond. You can kind of see this better here. It starts to disappear or get faint as I get right here on the straight buckle. Good here, but kind of faint here. So I'm gonna go back and do a little bit more here so that I can once again clearly see that racetrack all the way around the tooth just within an instant. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm just gonna prep that a little bit more. And that's it. All right. So that is our completed racetrack of our cuspid preparation. So let's take a good look at that. So you can see that right there. That's a, a nice, good looking racetrack. It's easily visible. I can see it right away when I take a look at that. So I'm gonna point out the differences. So the similarities between incisors and cuspids are really the cuspid is basically an incisor prep. It's all the same steps, but there are a few differences. 
difference number one is that your racetrack on a cuspid needs to be the full thickness of the tip of that burr, which is 0.8 millimeters. You'll find that on incisors, you can back off a little bit. On incisor preps, you can actually be a little bit less than the full thickness of the spur. So like between half and full thickness of the spur. On the cuspid, just like a molar, you need to go the entire thickness of the spur. The second thing that's different has to do with your second plane of reduction. On an incisor, that second plane of reduction is the entire distance mesiodistally of that incisal edge. You want to basically roll back that inside entire distance. On a cuspid, you can see the shape of a cuspid is more like a diamond. It's pointier here, so it's kind of like a diamond shape. All you need to do is take away the pointy part. So you're prepping more right in the straight middle and less here as you go interproximally. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna do my second plane of reduction. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going about the middle of that tooth and just about the center of that tooth there, I'm gonna just take out the pointy part and flatten that out. Because remember, the key point of anterior crown preparation, including the cuspid, is you want a thin incisal edge that follows the arch form, which is created by, once again, two things your second plane of reduction on the buckle, and then carrying the lingual reduction up to and including the incisal edge. So we've just done the second plane of reduction on the buckle on our cuspid here. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna do the lingual reduction. All you need to do is just make the lingual surface concave. So you can see it's a very, not a lot of reduction there. But the important thing is that you wanna carry the lingual reduction up to including the incisal edge. So that is what creates your thin incisal edge that follows the arch form. And we'll go ahead and point that out here. Let me put my flame diamond. Also serves as a handy little pointer here. So this is our completed preparation here uh, above, above the gum line. So you can see we have, once again, thin incisal edge that follows the arch form. It's created by two things, your second plane of reduction on the buckle, and then carrying the lingual reduction up to including the incisal edge. Now, we're going to do our subgingival reduction. Once again, the best way to achieve hemostasis is not to create it in the first place, so how do we prepare in a way that's not gonna create as much bleeding? So the way that we do that is we're gonna enter either where the tissue is the firmest. We're gonna enter either on the distal buckle, right near the papilla, or we're gonna enter on the mesial buckle, right near the papilla. And I actually, I've been preaching to keep your burr straight up and down or even undercutting it a little bit. But for the initial entry, when you're going to the subgingival area, I actually angle it a little bit as I create that hole. And as that hole starts to form, then I'm gonna to start to fan out past that point and remove that ledge. And as that ledge starts to disappear, here's the key point, as that ledge starts to disappear, now my sulcus will open up and I'll have more room to go the full depth, the millimeter and a half to two millimeters below the tissue that you need to do to get that crown to seat down, to get that cylindrical shape without any ledges that could potentially impede seating of that crown. And you can see as I'm prepping subgingival, doing these big sweeping movements, I'm actually tipping the burr almost as if I'm gonna create an undercut. And remember the tape, the burr has a little bit of taper too, like six degree taper or eight degree taper. So if I angle it, undercut a little bit, I end up with a nice cylindrical shape. So now I'm gonna go back and do the lingual reduction as well. Once again, I'm gonna enter in just a small amount, start to peel that ledge away. And as that ledge starts to disappear, now I have more room in the sulcus. Now I'm gonna upright my burr and I'm gonna go the entire distance, the entire millimeter and a half or two millimeters to finish my prep or to get that crown to seat down all the way. Show you here right here, ring around the rosy. I'm almost angling it in a little bit, five times, so that kind of smooths up anything. 
So that is my cuspid preparation. A couple things, remember the differences between a cuspid preparation and an incisor preparation, they're very similar, they have all the same steps, but the differences are, number one, the full thickness of that burr, 0.8 millimeters for your racetrack axial depth cut. Number two, second plane of reduction, you're only gonna do it more toward the middle of the tooth, you're taking that pointy diamond shape part away. And then the last part, number three, is that cuspid tooth is actually, let me grab one here, you can see the cuspid tooth is actually like a bullet shape. See the incisal edge on the cuspid is like the shape of, um, it's like the shape of a bullet. I'm gonna go in and round the edges of this tooth here to make my prep look more like a bullet. So basically all I'm doing is going in and rounding those edges there. So you can see my completed rep preparation looks like more of a bullet. Whereas with the incisors, I don't go back and round the edges. It's an optional thing for incisors. But with the cuspid, it's nice if you round the edges. And now here we go, drum roll, please. Does it seat on the first try? And it does. So once again, if you follow the directions on these, you do um, you know, use your depth cut burr features, um, your millimeter and a half reduction. Make sure that you visually see that racetrack on your uh, gross reduction racetrack axial depth cut set, step. And then number two and number three, the last thing is remember watch your burr angulation. The common mistake that people do is they over taper, which leaves ledges preventing the crown from seating down all the way. With practice, your preparation time should be in the three and a half to four and a half minutes per tooth.